Welcome back to the channel, Hosers. Time to put your poutine down and take a look at this review. This is Backdoor Tactical coming to you with a tabletop of the DPMS Oracle. This is the Optics Ready Carbine. And as you can see right away, it's kitted out with some Magpul parts. So I'm going to walk you through what I did, what it cost, and how the upgrades actually make it a bit more functional. So if I could just ask you guys now in advance to hit like if, uh, if I make you laugh. Hit subscribe if I teach anything, and uh, share the video if it's something you think could be useful to some of your shooting buddies. Uh, I've been forwarding these videos to my my family, and I can't even get them to watch. So hopefully you guys have some better luck. So what we've got here is uh, is a straight entry level AR carbine. This is the DPMS Oracle, and as configured when you buy it, I believe they go for about six ninety nine in Canada. I'm sure you could probably find them cheaper in the States. Uh, so you, you'll see the differences I, I did. I'm going to try to roll in a stock picture just so you see what it looks like stock. And then you can see what it looks like here. You'll notice I'm wearing my camouflage sleeves today, guys. I've uh, I've been stuck at home for quite a while and it's uh, really taken a, a toll on my wrists, if you know what I mean. So I have to keep my forearms and wrists and uh, elbows nice and tight. So we'll just, uh, I guess we'll start at the rear and just work our way forward. So just like my Stag 3G, I've put a Magpul ACS carbine stock. Uh, this has the dual locking system. So you see you have to push this, this pops down, and then it snaps back in. So it just adds a little bit extra security. Uh, six positions, of course. This one has waterproof storage compartments on each side. So you can fit your batteries in there. And then on the other side, you've got another one, as well as this little compartment, where as you can see, I have a sight tool and some batteries for my aim point. So there's some batteries in there, some loose batteries and what have you. So you've got a bit of storage in there. Uh, you know, it's a nice little touch. Just keep your stuff in there. Keep your waterproof matches in there. Great stock. Highly recommended. I actually also put on this extra rubber spacer. Again, this is Magpul. It just adds a little bit more rubber, uh, increase your length of pull, and uh, does a little bit of shock absorption. Next, we've got the Ergo G27 grip. This was just a uh, molded grip that you know has finger grooves, and I just find it, it fits a little bit better. It rides up here on the frame a little bit more, as you can see. So I find that that's, that just really helps bring it up and point faster. The trigger is stock. I didn't touch the trigger. I left that as is. Uh, you know, it's a regular mil spec trigger. Not much. Little gritty. Um, you know, five, six pounds probably. Um, can't complain. Uh, I, I've switched the triggers on my, my go-to ARs. So I, I left this one alone. Didn't want to spend the money. Up front, we've changed the foreguard here. I put a mag pole uh, with rail sections on each. So if you want to mount a laser there, these just screw right into the handguard. And you've got some Picatinny rail, as you can see, on each side. One on the bottom, I put an angled foregrip. Again, Magpul. So everything this gun is, is Magpul, guys. So it's an angled foregrip. I like this one. It allows you to pull it right into your, into your shoulder and, and really, you know, get uh, absorb that recoil. So nice, you know, nice little touch. Uh, this is the gas block and you'll notice that this on this rifle the gas block sits a little bit lower than the than the rail so if you're buying iron sights for this gun you're going to have to be cautious because they won't line up unless you get a gas block height front sight so what will happen is if you're just using regular magpul backup sights it's going to sit a little bit higher in the rear further this gas block gets incredibly hot so if you're going to put a front sight on it, make sure it's metal because this, if you're prolonged shooting, will melt a Magpul front sight. So be careful, guys. This gets extremely hot. All the gas comes through and it works its way back. So this heats up and it will melt a sight. Further, we've got a 16-inch pencil barrel, you know, nice and thin, keeps the weight down. Um, I've had no issues with it. The gun is fairly accurate. Uh, I'd say more accurate than me, but uh, I, I don't shoot this one for pinpoint precision. This is more of a rapid fire, 
with my aim point. Uh, this is a Yankee Hill break. I believe it was like 30 bucks. I just threw this on Yankee Hill and uh, nothing special. It works better than the A2 birdcage that it comes with. So as you can see, you know, just a few Magpul parts really makes this look like a Gucci AR. Uh, it's night and day different than what the stock comes with. The stock just has that ugly foregrip and the really useless stock, I find. Uh, this one allows you to really get your cheek up there and get a nice cheek weld. It's, it's molded and uh, beautiful and it's a little bit heavier so it helps with the recoil. QD point for a sling incorporated in so that's a nice touch this will pop in and out and you could put it on either side so that's a nice touch and it's just wearing a single point midway uh, bungee sling don't really use the sling guys uh, I just have it there just in case so up top we've got the aim point um, this is a great optic this is the patrol rifle optic they call it the aim point pro quick detach just a few clicks of this and it pops right on they say it's supposed to retain zero uh, when you take it on and off and I, I've found no issues there whatsoever it's got a see-through lens cap in the rear so you don't have to take lift this up if you don't want to you can I've always shot with it closed because it's see-through and uh, we'll just turn this on so I find this one has a two MOA dots and as you can see it's pretty fine as you start increasing though you'll notice that it becomes washed out and it actually starts the the light starts bleeding through the rest of the site so I find you can't really use this on full setting I typically shoot indoors and I keep it on on the third or fourth setting and you know it's a nice fine crisp dot great optic though um, you can't beat this for for what it costs you know for four or five hundred bucks I, th I think maybe they've gone up in price since it's it's just bulletproof this thing comes with a riser built in quick detach mount that you know how the mount works is you put it on and again they say it holds zero give me a second it's hard with one hand so you just turn the knob and then as you'll see, as it gets tight, it has a system where you just turn, it'll start clicking. So you hear that click, that means it can't go any tighter, it's reached its tension, and now it's just, it's like a torque wrench, it's just not allowing it to go further. So great sight, pop it on or off, uh, holds zero perfect, and great optic, uh, you know, it's, it's battle proven aim point, there's a reason uh, they're expensive because they work really well and they're built to last and it comes built in with this mount so you don't have to it, it comes as one unit so you'll really like that charging handle is stock as you can see i have a dummy round in there um you know it's not bad i prefer the geisley or even the bravo company uh with the extended but it works Standard bolt, uh, nothing special. They, you know, they work. I've had uh, no problems really with the bolt. Um, I, I run it fairly wet, and reliability has always been has been great with this rifle. The only issue I've ever come across with this rifle, and the reason I'm doing this review, is because I was having some short stroking issues with it. Failed to eject and failed uh, failed to feed, and. You know, I called the Canadian importer for DPMS and I told them some of the steps I've taken to diagnose it and uh, I'll just walk through what I did. So, change the buffer spring. First I thought maybe it's the spring. Change the buffer spring. Didn't do anything. I noticed that the gas block was a little loose after a while. So, as you can see here, two little set screws that hold the gas block in. I loosened up those gas gas uh, set blocks, took it out, realigned it. Gas block was fine, still short short stroking. It got to the point, guys, where this ba this gun basically turned into a semi, uh, sorry, a bolt action rifle for for lack of a better term. It would basically fire, 
and nothing would happen nothing at all would happen the bolts wouldn't move at all you'd have to you know chamber the next round manually and then fire it would go so like i said i changed the spring changed the gas block i actually put a new gas tube on and same same problem so uh long story short after diagnosing it i found out that the gas key so right here guys believe it or not this gas key which sits on top of the bolt got something stuck in there and i'm going to show you so something got stuck in there I, i'm sure you can't see it because i can't even see it but look at that it stops something got stuck in there it's supposed to come out through this hole right there right see that's supposed to this hole the gas goes in here into the into the bolt the bolt catches the gas and it moves back and forth something got stuck in there and actually melted from prolonged shooting i guess it heated up and melted i suspect it was a bit of a primer because i was shooting some norinco surplus ammo and i bet a primer got in there and stuck and melted so what i did was i'll just take this down so something got stuck in there so what i did was i ordered a new gas key and i'll just to show you what it's supposed to do so you see you put this in the gas key and what it's supposed to do is well, it's hard to see now, but I'd have to clear the bolt, which I'm not going to do. It comes out. Um, so I, I didn't stake it. You can see I just I just screwed these two screws in with some red Loctite. Normally, you're supposed to stake it. I don't have the staking tool, and I wasn't going to do a home job. I found the red Loctite, and the screwing has worked perfectly fine. I've had no issues whatsoever, and uh, the gun runs reliably now. So believe it or not, guys... One in a million, one in five million, whatever you want to call it. Something got stuck in there and melted. And uh, for the life of me, I couldn't figure it out. I used to work on the rifle, drive to the range, test it. Wouldn't work. Drive home, change something, drive back, and back and forth and so on. It took me a while to figure that out. So just keep that in mind, guys, if, if you ever run across something like that. So since we've got this apart, I'll just show you. Trigger mechanism, like I said, nothing special, just a regular mill spec. Buffer tube, um, I believe that's just a regular commercial buffer. I haven't changed. The spring was changed, but the buffer weight is stock. I do have an extra tungsten weight. I might put it in here. Uh, I haven't decided yet. Uh, I don't know if there's any. I don't know if there's any purpose to. It's just one of those things. You know, it's working. Why change it? um it's not a competition rifle by any stretch and it's been really reliable so i might just leave it be up front you've got a nice nice feed ramp in there that's uh you know supposed to be i'm not sure if these are rated for full auto or not but um you know like i said the gun's been really reliable just a stock charging handle to put it back together guys maybe I'll, I'll just show you quickly so back together charging handle goes in there's a little little divot in there that this gun uh, the charging handle slides into bolt pull the key out so you see how it goes in and out this will slide in the gas key forward slam it and then there's two little these are the takedown pins that's it two pins holds it in Put it in and just put those push those pins back and you're good to go so that's all there is for a takedown and you'll see it cycles fine so that's it guys uh ar dpms great great rifle uh you know what for 600 bucks uh, i think this or the smith and wesson m p2 are the way to go the m p2 um i don't have first-hand experience with i do have friends who have it and they love it um i'm sure you know there's no issues with it uh ars seem pretty good now nowadays my first ar was a norinco and i'll be honest um it was kind of a piece of junk uh the fit and finish was terrible had a lot of uh spurs and 
rough, really rough edges and you know the fit and finish wasn't there. Reliability was just, you know, it was adequate. It wasn't, I wouldn't say it was, you know, unreliable, but it definitely left a little bit to be desired. I had a few issues with it and uh, it was one of those those guns that, you know, you get it and you kind of have to tinker with it for it to run reliably. And I, I prefer things to work right out of the box. And this one has been, um, like I said, the only issue was that, which I'm going to chalk up to, you know, just a, a long shot. I don't fault the gun for that. Uh, you know, something got stuck in there and melted. And like I said, the chances of that ever happening again are slim to none, I'd say. In fact, um, you know, when I called the, the importer, they've never even heard of something like that happening. So I don't know how it happened, but it did. So other than that, uh, that's pretty much the, the, the rifle. Um, you know, it's got a little tiny bit of a mag well, nothing too, too flared or anything like that. Um, reliably feeds with Magpul P-Mags. No issue whatsoever with P-Mags. Surprisingly, it doesn't like the steel mags. And I suspect that's because in Canada we have to pin our magazines to five. So the magazine this came with was a 30 round metal magazine and I suspect that the importing company who pinned it uh, did a poor job pinning it and that's why that one didn't work. But the P-Mags, P-Mags work phenomenally. Um, they, they love the P-Mag and it also actually works with the, the LAR pistol magazines that hold 10 rounds. So no issues with the LAR and P-Mag. I'd be careful with the, the metal magazines, um, the USGI magazines and uh, Elander up here in Canada. So um, just be careful with those guys. Stick with P-Mags if, you, if you're going to get this rifle. The only downside I think to this rifle that, that I would, you know, say if I was shopping again for, a, for an AR would be the fact that it doesn't have a free float barrel. So this uses a traditional delta ring here you see how that goes up and down guys that delta ring holds the handguard in place the gas tube goes through it into the bolt so there's a gas tube from here all the way down into the bolt and this delta ring here uh, holds it all together holds this handguard in place uh, i prefer my ars now that i know a little bit more about them to have a free floating rail they say it's supposed to aid with accuracy because the rail uh, when you grab the rail, the front end, it's not putting any pressure on the barrel whatsoever, whereas this one is. Again, this one, not an issue. I use this more for planking, nothing for target. This is just more, you know, uh, from the half ready or low ready. I just bounce up and pop my five rounds as fast as possible and then rinse and repeat. Just do it over and over with my aim point. Uh, with my stags, um, especially the 3G, I have a scope on there and I use that more for precision. I even put a bipod on that sometimes and use that for precision. But this one, I just, uh, for plinking, it's fine. But that's the only upgrade that I would like to see if I was shopping uh, for, for one AR. Um, like to have one AR to do it all would be the free float, the free float uh, handguard. Pencil barrel is fine. I don't find it uh, accuracy degrades when it heats up. So I don't think that's an issue. In fact, I kind of like the, the pencil barrel because it saves on weight. Um, it, it really takes its toll on you when you're firing a heavy barrel for, for prolonged periods. So that's pretty much it, guys. As you can see, the fin and finish is good. No gaps whatsoever. You know, they fit together nicely. I've seen some rifles that this upper and lower don't come together nicely and there's wiggle. This one doesn't fits really nicely you know real really good especially for a 700 hundred dollar rifle so hit me up if you have any questions but right there that's the dpms oracle and as you could see you know you spend a little bit money on some magpul parts and the gun looks phenomenal it looks it looks like a 15 14 1500 dollar gun uh, and really it only cost 100 bucks for the stock 30 bucks for the grip 30 bucks for the handguard and 30 bucks for the forward assist so all right, guys, let me know if you have any questions, if there's anything else you want to see. Uh, once this pandemic's over, I'll do another video shooting all three ARs. And, and uh, take care, guys.